Let's switch gears. With federal cannabis reform on the horizon in the U.S., lawmakers, advocates, and the industry are focused on creating a diverse and inclusive industry. But progress, well, it hasn't been easy as stakeholders balance equity with the interest of big business. Joining me now from the MJ BizCon in Las Vegas is Cheddar Cannabis reporter Chloe Aiello. Chloe, you're in Vegas. So great to see you. I'll toss it over to you, my friend. Hey, Hannah, thank you so much. And I'm joined now by Tahir Johnson. He's the Director of Social Equity and Inclusion at Marijuana Policy Project. Tahir, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, Chloe, how are you? Doing great. So I wanted to start with a broad overview of the industry. What's the state of the diversity and inclusion in the cannabis industry in 2021? Absolutely. So when it comes to diversity in the cannabis industry, it's certainly, um, you know, certainly something where we need to be, we need more diversity. Um, right now, I've seen statistics that have shown that there's about 4% African Americans in cannabis, less than 10% people of color all together over the overall industry. And I'm certainly trying to make strides to help include diversity of minorities and um, women in the cannabis industry as well. Absolutely. And speaking of statistics like that, Marijuana Business Daily just released a report uh, on the state of you know, people of color, women in the industry. And they noted that although there seems to be more people overall participating, there are fewer people in positions of power, like executive positions, especially even compared to 2019. Why is this happening? They did. And, and it's a super interesting report. And it was great to see that data all in one place. And there are a number of things showing that, like you said, while the industry is growing, I think because the difficulty, the fact that it's becoming more capital intensive and different things like that and different barriers to being able to be involved in the industry are part of the reason for that. Again, we're seeing access to capital, access to real estate being huge problems and typically women and minorities tend to have less access to that. So I think it has a direct impact on people that are able to be entrepreneurs in the cannabis space. But also I think um, in terms of diversity, I think that we need to have more um, within corp within corporate um, within corporations as well, like saying CEOs and people in the C-suite, and that's another issue that I'm trying to tackle also. Now, speaking of that, you know, Marijuana Policy Project obviously has its hands directly on policy when it comes to cannabis in this country. What are some actionable ways that companies and lawmakers can work to change this in a positive direction? Absolutely. Well, one of the things that I'm working on right now is a program, an internship program to place um, to place minorities and some of our member companies at the U.S cannabis council and that would give an opportunity for a pipelines for positions in leadership and upper management um, again i think we also just saw the first black ceo of a publicly traded cannabis company appointed troy datcher at the parent company so i'm always trying to point to different things like that to show opportunities for people with experience from other industries to be able to transfer over into cannabis um, and so again i think this hopefully this internship program that we're building to expose people to professional opportunities in cannabis can be something that will start to change the game a little bit. I do want to shift gears a little bit and talk about Senator Schumer's Cannabis Administration and Opportunity Act. It seems to be the path forward that a lot of lawmakers are uh, advocating for in terms of federal reform. In your opinion, uh, what is your assessment of this bill? Does it go far enough to address equity and inclusion in the industry? Sure. Well, it, um, the Cannabis Administration Opportunity Act is the most comprehensive cannabis reform bill that we've seen thus far. Um, it, has a, it does have a number of measures to be able to support people that have been impacted by the war on drugs. But I also think that access to capital continues to be a continues to be a problem and a barrier. So I think we need to, in addition to getting the Cannabis Administration Opportunity Act passed, we need to find solutions that offer access to banking and access to capital. Um, and some of that can be done through the Safe Banking Act, which is also um, another bill that's going through um, making its way around the hill as well. Now, obviously, this bill in its current form does lack the support it needs uh, in the Senate to actually move forward into law right now. Is there any concern that as this becomes a version that more lawmakers will embrace, it will actually erode in terms of some of the equity provisions that are currently in the bill? Well, I think one thing that's very clear is that I think the pathway forward to legalization is through social equity. I think that right now we definitely see a realization that we need to fix the harms of the war on drugs. And, um, you know, when it comes to different lawmakers on different sides of the aisle, there are different priorities. Um, but again, I think if, if I if I read what I see from reading the tea leaves, again, I don't think that we see legalization without social equity being at the forefront of it. 
And finally, speaking of those different pathways uh, toward equity in the industry, we have seen a lot of states, uh, notably Illinois, New York, actually really prioritizing equity uh, when it comes to legalization. So in your opinion, what are some of the states that have done, at least up until this point, uh, the best job at prioritizing legalization, not just from a policy perspective, but actually when carrying this policy out? For sure. So, so far, like you said, we've seen Illinois and Massachusetts both roll out statewide programs. Early on, Illinois was praised for, um, you know, a lot of the things that it, that it did for social equity. Um, the licensing has been somewhat um, disappointing, um, but, the, but the, some of the things that they've done to actually start the trend of um, restoring and putting money in communities that have been harmed by the war on drugs is something that I think is great. And then now with legalization in states like New York and New Jersey on the East Coast, we're seeing that really happen in a big way. So I think that there's a lot of hope for those new markets, Virginia included in that as well, in terms of what they'll look like and how that will change the shape of social equity. Well, we will certainly have to keep an eye on that to hear. Thank you so much for joining us and for being our inaugural interview here at yes. MJ BizCon. That's Tahir Johnson, Director of Social Equity and Inclusion at Marijuana Policy Project. Thank you.